Good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Good morning. Very good morning. So we are into our final day, and and today yeah. Are you getting? Are you? Are you audible? Yeah, you are audible. Uh, yeah. Maybe a little louder compared to earlier. Yeah, slightly better now. Okay. Okay. Good morning. I am audible to all of you. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So first we will have Professor Reed's lecture, uh, the slides. Right. So we will wait sir for five minutes and then we can start. Yeah, yeah. no problem. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Students can have discussion. Yeah, the Today students have any last question. Yes, any query or any question they can discuss. Yeah. And uh, we will give to all of them that uh, wonderful ebook. Yes, yes, yes. I will share that. I... They will not forget. And it will also help them uh, to apply for future projects. We expect your university to now venture into this area after they see today's yeah, presentation. Definitely. I think definitely. a lot of them will look into some new projects, apply for new projects, and also work on new projects. So, Hello, sir. Good morning. 
yes good morning yesterday you have said sir solar cell can be used in dts how can it be implemented in that field sir is it audible sir yes yes yeah i i i didn't get the question sir again again yes. you can repeat you can repeat yesterday you have said that uh, solar cells can be used in bts tower in ds tunnel bts tower then how it can be implemented in that field sir yeah today's lecture today's lecture will illustrate that see today we are talking about vanu bts so kindly go through today's lecture okay. and i think many points will become clear to you vanu anyway any wave uh, uh, series of uh, you know that particular talk which i am giving uh, on the second lecture today uh, that will very very clearly clarify this point and it will elucidate a uh, very good inputs for you to uh, sort of uh, think about this whole process and see how it can be adapted okay sir thank you hello sir yes can be used sdr in home automation system can be used sdr in home uh, home automation system for uh, home automation system yes 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 you can you can oh, that will be a good project please think over it i think uh, today after uh, you listen to any wave bts from vanu uh, that uh, group uh, which th after that presentation you will get a lot of ideas all these presentations are going to be with you and you can immediately utilize that idea not a problem okay sir sir yes what what are the what are we doing for programming in this field what are we doing for programming in this field yeah what language we use in this field yeah very very nice question good question uh, normally you see uh, especially we electronics engineers or the core branch engineers are very good in c programming so from c we have migrated to c++ object oriented programming mm. so uh, this uh, particular programming platform is always good to do in this type of c and c++ environment and uh, we can always uh, use suitable interface to go to python but we will not advocate languages like uh, uh, java and all that that is all not advocated for this so this is all more into our core area of computers okay so whatever expertise uh, which you people already have uh, in uh, fundamental c programming and uh, these type of things 
you could easily extend and then uh, take this off and it will work very well okay sir so shall we start or uh, because already 25 i already joined so good morning again and uh, today we are having the last session so i request all the participant to concentrate more and uh, get something new from sir and uh, so that we can carry forward with our university with our department and uh, with madhya pradesh or with nation and very importantly sir i want uh, your university now to start applying for some uh, wonderful projects because government of india wants to uh, sort of allocate such projects to government institutes like yours okay. so students and faculty come out with some wonderful ideas on these concepts because these are emerging topics and uh, very much in need uh, for a place like bhopal right it would also help and uh, look at uh, newer things which i can take it much further ji sir so i will uh, put your first uh, paper read paper i will start yes sir and, yes okay okay thank you sir So is it visible, sir? Ah, uh, I think you got it. Yes, yes. Yeah. So very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, faculty members, participants of this. Uh, webinar we are into the final day and uh, the first talk which i am going to discuss is on can we go to the first slide sir just go back yeah uh, software defined radio issues for spectrum management okay yeah this is basically he was one of the pi pioneers professor Jeffrey H V who is the director of the Virginia Tech uh, Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering okay so they were one of the pioneers who brought out uh, this type of uh, <coughs> discussion okay we go to the first slide yeah so uh, now this particular term sdr was coined way back in 1992 by professor mitola and uh, then um, he was the first one to think about uh, this type of an idea and what is important was the radio's physical layer behavior is primarily defined in software so that is what we have been uh, looking at uh, yesterday's lecture maybe the previous day's lecture we are basically trying to identify from the hardware radio receiver which portion of that would correspond to the software where do you think uh, software will be sort of omnipresent or it would be delineating one particular sector at which where we can subject that to a total software type of behavior okay so as all of you know uh, the entry point to the radio would be through the antenna and the rf front end so these are areas where uh, it is going to be very difficult for software to really come in so those are the areas where uh, in the physical layer where the hardware will get retained okay the second point is 
that uh, the third, third uh, bullet which we are discussing is it accepts fully programmable traffic and control information. Okay, and then uh, the another spectacular feature of this uh, radio is that it supports a broad range of frequencies, air interfaces, and application software. And uh, <clears throat> the next point is changes its initial configuration to satisfy user requirements. Okay, so that means it's highly adaptable. Okay, and then we come to the penultimate point in this uh, slide, which is basically a radio that handles standards yet to be designed. Okay, and Professor Reed was one of the pioneers who sort of promulgated this idea at the Virginia Tech University. And the last point is software radio is the natural platform for cognitive radio, which we would be discussing right at the end of this presentation. Okay, there are a few slides which would uh, sort of highlight. We'll go to the next slides. So one of the most supreme advantages of STR, which we see highlighted in the red capsule there, in the red letters, is that, uh, please look at that word, this is one of the greatest attributes which we give to STR, flexibility to better use the spectrum. Because the spectrum is so scarce, and we are really uh, sort of hounded by this criteria that how do we effectively utilize the spectrum for different applications. Okay. Then, uh, thanks to this SDR concept, uh, because silicon resource has become uh, very, very expensive. So, thanks to the advent of SDR now, uh, we are able to have reduced content of expensive custom silicon. And the third point would be reduced parts of the inventory. And the fourth one would be the right declining prices in computing components, which is something we embrace because of this great advancements which has been happening in the computer technology. Then we have uh, uh, the fifth attribute, uh, which is something uh, which we embrace very well, especially we electronics and communication engineers are very happy at this uh, viewpoint. No, 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 sir. Yeah. Uh, this particular viewpoint. Now, please go back to that. Previous slide, please. Yeah, please, please let it be here. So, the fifth point which I'm trying to put across is digital signal processing. The DSP can compensate a very important point for all our uh, students to note scholars is DSP can compensate for imperfections in RF components allowing cheaper components to be used. This is very important because we are replacing a lot of that hardware whether it is in the antenna structure or in the filter structure or whatever it is with the help of DSP we are able to compensate for those imperfections and we are able to come out with ultimately what is it that uh, we are trying to program uh, those perfect waveforms, which is one. Uh, next point is a very general point where we talk about open architecture, allows multiple vendors. And uh, the last point is maintainability enhanced. Okay, that is the last point. Next slide. Next slide. You're not able to go, sir. Can I actually?
to the next slide. I'm not getting it, sir. Next slide is not coming. No, it is there. No, I am not able to see. What happens? No, sir. It is not on our screen. It is not. Hey, it I is am not visible, able. sir. You are not able to see. I am not able to see. Not visible. But I will again start. Okay, sir. Yeah, I think you'll have to start from the beginning, looks like, and then go. You're not able to go to this slide. Ayane Abhidak, I think it's just come, trying to come. Ayane Abhidak. Ah, just come now. Just come. Just come now. But uh, are you on to that uh, fifth slide or. Uh, anyway, now can you go back to the previous slide, sir? Yeah, next one. Now we are on the right one. Next slide. Yeah. Okay. I'll start from here. Okay. So the key points now to be reckoned are uh, we have uh, the distinction of uh, now embracing flexible RFICs, which were not present for a long time. Uh, they are uh, now being enabled, uh, but then they still have certain drawbacks. Then we have new computing approaches seem to be gaining momentum in supplying programmable hardware and others on the horizon, similar technology. Texas Instrument and other vendors are working hard to define technology and tools by SDR. So now we say SDR combined with current standards can provide new capabilities. And that is exactly what we are seeing now. Next slide. Yeah. So now uh, we have an update on where SDR, RF, and baseband processing technology appears to be heading. Okay. Next slide. So where are the issues? We have an issue regarding cost, flexibility, extensibility, time to market. Of course, time to market would necessitate testing also and then novel capabilities. And uh, we look at a very important aspect today, handset power consumption and the profile changes. This is again a good research area where we want uh, youngsters to look at it, especially the mobile handsets which are coming now. Okay, And uh, the RF portion used to power Okay, uh, uh, the RF would have been the portion which used to consume maximum power. So we say it's a power hogging criteria. Now it is more distributed, what was earlier. So RF power demand dominates power consumption in legacy mobile phones. Now we have dispensed of 
Now content delivery and applications are now increasing processor and LCD power demands, causing a more equal split of power. Otherwise, they were skewed towards the RF side. Next slide. So now we have a close look at uh, and the type of frequencies. I want the students to uh, focus their attention on this, uh, especially the type of frequency ranges which are being handled. Examples of key emerging technologies are we have tunability from, look at this, it's a great, great uh, opportunity now with the SDR to sort of encompass this. We are able to tune it from uh, in the a little bit of the lower UHF band from 700 megahertz right up to 4200 megahertz. That means just entering the C band. And uh, so you are able to utilize it. So a lot of the present day uh, cellular mobile communication bands are totally covered by this. So whether you're going to operate in GSM or CDMA or 2G, 2.5G, 3G, 3.5G, 4G. Uh, these are all things which are getting covered. And uh, typically the bandwidth uh, at which uh, this is also uh, being reckoned with, it starts from a frequency like 200 kilohertz up to 20 megahertz. Uh, that is a fairly good bandwidth on which the control is being exercised. Next point is very important. It is real-time control. This is a wonderful property which we would like to harness. And then uh, uh, the CMOS fab into other chips that can be brought out. Software control to component level. Uh, so it is not uh, confined to only the periphery, but you can go deep down and then right into the component uh, level. We can uh, sort of uh, configure. Then uh, the next point is intended for handsets, base station version to come. And uh, uh, the thing which we'll be discussing next can be used in Wanu any wave base station, uh, which we'll be discussing in the next presentation. And uh, the note the need for pre selector and, of course, encompassing this great family of cellular as well as. Uh, WLANs. That means you can take off from GSM, go to GPRS, then go to H, and uh, which is an advanced version, just entering just before getting into CDMA. That is, then we have wireless CDMA and uh, uh, HSDPA, which we discussed yesterday, and all this on the pan European standards. Then it also encompasses the American standard, which is basically uh, what uh, was adopted from Korea. Basically, the Koreans have done a lot of good work in this, the IS-95B and all that, which is basically into that CDMA family, 1XRTT, uh, uh, EVDO, okay, and uh, which is basically uh, a combination of voice, enhanced voice and data only type of system. And then uh, ultimately going into uh, 802.11b up to G. That means all the wireless LANs. So all these are getting covered using our SDR. So this is a great, great uh, uh, attribute which we are giving to SDR because normally we used to uh, be communication engineers always had a lot of difficulties when we are working with cellular systems and wanted to migrate towards a computer system like WLAN. So the interface becomes very, very difficult. The technologies are so different. So here then is a great opportunity. Next slide, sir. Oh, again, it has gone off. Professor? Professor Sharma? Hello, Professor Sharma.
Asis, you can make me host. What is that? My, my connection got lost. So, so just a minute, I will start. Uh, Asis, Asis, you can make me host. Asis, what? Are you waiting? Asis. While uh, they are trying to get this system, uh, am I audible to the participants, sir? Yes, 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 sir, yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, I want them. Uh, I'm just going to discuss about Vanu AnyWave systems later. Just uh, for their information, Vanu Bose was the son of Amar Bose, uh, who is a famous uh, Bose speakers who have come out with, and he was uh, born in America, brought out. Uh, brought up in America. Unfortunately, Vanu Bose passed away in 2017, just at the age of two, uh, 52 years. He was a student from MIT who founded. He was uh, who founded this uh, uh, Vanu software-defined radio company, and he was the pioneer in that. So, uh, basically, he graduated from MIT in Boston, and. Uh, had uh, very good credentials. Uh, um, he finished his PhD in 99. And he was a leading software ex executive and a member of MIT Corporation and deep ties to the Institute. Unfortunately, he died at a very young age of 52 due to pulmonary, pulmonary embolism, a sudden development. But otherwise, he was a wonderful software pioneer in exploiting software defined radio. So that is how this, all this has come out of here, this technology. And this company, Vanu Anywave company was developed in the year 1998. Okay. And uh, he was very fond of uh, uh, developing this communication, especially for rural uh, people. So uh, it was first uh, exploited in rural conditions. So very much adaptable to Indian conditions. So a lot of uh, rural areas in South America, in Africa, in other places in America also exploited. This. Of course, now newer developments have come. But at that point in time, from 98 to early 2006, 7, uh, I think uh, Manu radio was uh, really being uh, utilized in a very big way. In India, CDOT uh, company also embraced this technology and quite a lot of development took place in India also on this field. So one of the potential employees for our students is this company called Center for Development of Telematics. Uh, it's a core engineering company located in Bangalore and Delhi. So a lot of students can look at opportunities, especially when they work on projects in these areas.
Asis Bhatt. You can make me host Asis Bhatt. Uh, there are some issues <laughs> because this this Zoom platform. If you get disconnected, it makes someone else host automatically. Oh, so someone else is now host and is not giving permission to me. <laughs> so that is the thing. So, so, so you are trying to get that. Uh, yes, yes. So I am, yeah, I requested the man. But today traffic should be much less, I thought, Sunday. They, yeah, they yeah. May not be. It, should be it should be less. So just a minute, I think uh, our man operator will look into that and, and solve it. No problem. Yeah, please take your time. Sir.
risen to 120,000 here. So what does this trend show us? This trend shows us that uh, uh, should, there should be enhanced, uh, that the uh, entire trend can be enhanced by increasing interest for FPGA manufacturers to focus on power consumption issues. Okay, And the benefit coming from shrinking geometries and new architecture. So Vertex 5 is an example where the diagonal connections are 65 nanometers. So then the other thing aspect is to increasing number of ASIC and ACID cores. So optimized at gate level. So we also have another property called lower power high performance, turning on in GPPs, and FPGAs and DSPs. We have video co-processors, Adobe co-processors, graphic cores. So emerging IC, ASIC IT market as a processor complex, as processor complex is what finally we conclude here. Next. So uh, the problems and opportunities is what we are putting forth. First is we are looking at a Pico chip, which is an example of an emerging computing architecture here. So the philosophy behind this is you can, on the right side, we can see the Pico array architecture. Okay. And uh, this was from 2005. And uh, it's a Pico array technology, which gives you the tools uh, story here and you have the processor on the left side and the inter pico array interface or the asynchronous data interface and uh, we have example of signal flows here uh, typically uh, what it says is uh, uh, fpga but with processors instead of clvs and target base station market and the peak performance is going up to 197 uh, chips and uh, we have 38.6 gmax 3.3 terabits per second on the communication bandwidth and uh, 308 processors and uh, these are the type of uh, speeds at which they are working and along with this we have 14 core processor accelerators for fec or linux and the maximum power consumption is as low as 5 watts okay then uh, from here, they've, trans uh, they've also translated to WiMAX and HSTPA reference implementation for companies like Nortel, Fujitsu, Ericsson, Airspan, and Intel. Okay, so the very important point to remember here is Intel owns a stake in this Pico chip, so they have very much a vested interest. Next slide. Next. So the opportunities now are uh, MEMS is, be uh, is beginning to pay off with the flexible RFICs, so maybe useful for this multi-band, multi-mode phones, okay, where we are looking at uh, the cell phone to work across different uh, bands of frequencies and different modes of operation because one can be operated in the CDMA mode, the other will be in GSM mode, the other could be for a Chinese operating standard or a Japanese operating standard. The other aspect is uh, with the example of Vertex 5, FPG is gaining in popularity and starting to focus on lower power. and the third point is the processes are becoming more computationally efficient with additional cores and this has this has come with a new trend that means both trends what do they do they enhance the feasibility of hdr at the handset now this will be a great property to embrace bringing in hdr into the handset okay on the other hand, the next point which you look at is SEA is not that popular with commercial companies, but lessons to guide future development. That is where it is going to be very useful. And uh, uh, what comes out of this is uh, market for some standardized software architecture for mobile 
and the SCA based infrastructure management package. And the last point here, which we look at, is spectrum management and radio resource management are the first to benefit from cognitive radio. Okay, because spectrum management is coming in a very big way in COGRAD, which we will see at the end of our presentation. Next slide. So, uh, while talking about uh, the major attributes on SDR, some of the unresolved, unresolved SDR issues are also to be highlighted here. In that, we first talk on software architecture issues. So, what do they necessitate? They necessitate that they would need something from the commercial sector which, would, which they can adopt. Techniques for managing and supporting both ports and fine waveform adaptation within the software radio framework and develop a reconfigurable SDR architecture more suitable for runtime reconfiguration than the SCA requirement and automatic deployment of components to different devices. Next point is regarding language and protocols for initiating interface with software and validation by existing devices as policies change across time and space and metrics for comparing SDR platforms and frameworks. Power consumption is still a very key issue and this is where we think cognitive radio might help in a big way. Next slide. Next slide, sir. So this is the last. Ah, this is the last one. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that brings us an end to this portion of the presentation. Now we will go to uh, uh, we will go to smart play. Okay, that presentation, and uh, that is talking about uh, Vanu anyway. Sir, you want uh, uh, Banu or that other one, Michael, Michael Hamrich? Which uh, one? Now? You have put, uh, I think Banu would be better. Okay, right okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, of course, uh, I wish to thank uh, my uh, colleague at uh, Vignan University, who has been basically responsible for enabling these slides to be put across to you. And I would be failing in my duty if I did not acknowledge Dr. Ravi Shekhar Erabatlu, uh, who had an opportunity to work at SmartPlay is basically an expert in 5G communications. So these were some of the slides which I specifically requested him to share with me for the benefits of our students who will get the complete exposure. We'll go to the first slides. Uh, so immediately what uh, comes to my mind is, uh, um, is the broad requirements um, which are there. So, um, as you remember, uh, this company, uh, uh, Manu Bose was uh, the son of Mehit Bose, uh, who the famous uh, person who has come out with the Bose speakers, which have a patent uh, from America. And he developed this company called Manu 
anywhere, uh, any way company, and uh, he was a student from MIT. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2017. Okay, but please go through all the developments. And his aim was to develop uh, the software-defined radio for rural application. So that was the bent of mind which he had. So. What is this? It's a fully featured lab environment with equipment and tools to ex exercise. RAND stands for Radio Access Network Software effectively. And it has all the core network from tier 1, uh, mobile handset banks, load generators, simulators. And uh, the key features are provided in this. And uh, we have experienced uh, project managers who have worked closely with the Vanus technical team and to get the customer deployment scenarios and project reviews. So a lot of mobile companies in India had the opportunity to work with this. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, so uh, these are all uh, the requirements which you have in terms of uh, the verification tools and uh, what all is required okay, for the testing efforts. Currently, they have 1100 tests covered functional subsystem, system tests, performance related testing, the large gap in the one is test coverage. And uh, this is covering all the GSM voice, GPRS data, H data up to 3G and can also translate. So if the vendor does not have the access to an appropriate core network, an alternate setup consisting of test equipment is also being made of it. Next slide. So very flexibly they've given this whole thing. Yeah, we'll go to the next slide. So, so, of course, he is so much concerned about user support. That is why uh, he has passed on a lot of help to the customers. That's why they are very happy to work with Vanu anyway. Next. Next. So request is to keep it with the students and faculty because it's more for internal consumption, but we want the concept. So now we come to Vanu AnyWave solution. The student was asking us that question. I think many things will become clear the moment you go through. On the top, we have uh, the PSTN, the plain old telephone systems as we call it. Okay, so which is basically, please remember, this is a great example of circuit switch. The mobile switching center, the base station controller, which we have. Then we come to BTS, whereas on the bottom side, on the lower side, is where we have an IP based network, which is predominantly a packet switch network, which is what exploit, is exploited in GPRS and the packet data service, okay, which is coming under GSN and PDSM, and the packet control unit function, which is brought out here. So, Vanu Anyway Radio Access Network covers multiple cellular standards operating at the same time. That is very important. And add new wireless standards through remote software only downloads. One need not go to the site. This is a big advantage. Compatible, that is a great advantage of software defined radio. In fact, you don't have to visit the uh, field premises. So, from a remote uh, point, you could uh, access that software. And this is a great attribute which we say because these were two different families the circuit switch network and the packet switch network. Here, then, one who anyway, that's how he derived this uh, word itself, compatible with legacy circuit switch as well as IP based core networks. Next slide. So, uh, comparison of the BTS architecture, conventional and Vanu's SDR. So, the traditional SDR architecture for a line pod in BTS 
as you go from right side, right hand side to left hand side, we have the RF chain, okay, then we have the receiver, then the signal processing system, then the layer three upstairs. So these were the ones. So now we will find in the signal processing subsystem, we have the firmware on a PG or DSP, whereas at layer three, we have software on general purpose process. So the moment we come to one software radio, they have segregated. What they have segregated is they have brought RF chain and receiver exciter on the RF head, okay? And then they have taken signal processing and layer three as a portable one software on industry standard server. Okay. So in between we have the RF sample interconnect using standard network input IO points. So you could see how the Banu software radio architecture is able to segregate in a very elegant fashion and still accomplish what was required from the earlier requirements. Next. So uh, we come to some conclusions from that. The first of them being software radio easily supports, note this word, simultaneous operation of multiple wireless standards. I repeat, software radio supports simultaneous operation of multiple wireless standards. That is, an IT server, it is almost similar to what in uh, information technology which we do. That is, basically an IT server runs multiple different applications. In a similar way, software radio solution can support all current standards starting from GSM, CDMA, IDM, etc. and has the ability to remotely download new standards as they are introduced. Okay. So then the next point is software radio uses. This is very uh, something which is very user friendly to all of us is that it uses an open standards approach to hardware. So unlike firmware radio, which is limited to specific hardware, it's designed for software radio can use any off the shelf platform ranging from cost effective high volume servers to high reliability environmental tolerant systems. So it's very flexible for its application uh, maneuvering and utilization. Next. Then we find SR delivers improved price performance over time. So with firmware radio, each product is tied to a particular hardware platform that is used throughout the product's life cycle. So that platform quickly becomes obsolete over time. Unlike this particular property, software radio using standard servers actually improves in price performance over time. So it's very flexible and also it reduces site physics and speed of deployment. Okay. So it doesn't rely on when that hardware was purchased. So carriers can add new wireless standards to increase traffic channels quickly via remote software downloads from a single location. Next slide. So this is the anyway multi-standard uh, single network. So embracing one who's open standard approach. So what does it do? It manifests itself in enabling faster deployments while future proofing the network for remote additions of new standards in additional capacity. So if you look at it, uh, I'll start uh, from below. Uh, from the BSC, uh, single BSC server can support multiple wireless standards in any frequency band here. There's a core network access, remote access network, and uh, we have here uh, what is coming in. And then from there, it goes to BTS, okay? And this is where we find single BTS server can support multiple wireless standards in any frequency band with the help of WANU's software, which is manifesting at each of these places. Then we have the RF head, okay? It's a wide band up-down converter with appropriate uh, A to D and D to A converters. The waveforms are digitized into IP packets and sent via uh, DTE to processor of any technology. Okay. 
That means basically the gigabit Ethernet fiber. Through that, we can send all this. So you could see how this breakdown has occurred here and how each one of these inputs are getting interfaced. Next slide. So, uh, what does this do? Uh, we have to talk a little bit about the RF head. The RF head, what does it do? It performs RF up slash down conversion, digitization and digital channel filtering. It exchanges multiple digital baseband sample streams with the crossing platform. So, then we next one, next point to discuss is the multi carrier power amplifier takes in the low power RF transmit signal from the RF head and boosts, boosts it by as much as you could see the type of amplification here. 60 dB is a very large boosting of power, and MCPA is designed that is, multi carrier power amplifier is designed to support simultaneous amplification of multiple wireless standards within a 25 megahertz bandwidth. That is a pretty good bandwidth that we should be done with the gain of that order. Next slide. Of course, a GPS unit is uh, being provided for accurate timing, reference, and spot on. Okay. Uh, required frequency accuracy synchronized with other base stations. Okay. Then you have a processing platform runs the software wireless standards on top of a standard operating system like Linux. See how nicely they've embraced the Linux open platform. IBM is very happy with this type of software and has been helping them a lot. So the processing platform is made up of one or more processing units, which are either embedded, rack mounted, or blade, or in a blade function. Next slide. Yeah. So finally, with this background, we are able to show you. Uh, you have a laptop here, and you could see Wano Anyway Pay Station. See how nicely in a rack formation they have mounted it. Okay. And after seeing several of the uh, newer uh, developments in that point in time, somewhere around 2004, 5, 6, that was where the development came about, especially in 2007. A lot of these ideas, many of the other vendors have taken, but you could see various modules where they are, the GPS frequency reference, the power amplifier connector panel, you could see them located right down below because the optical fiber is interfaced with this right here. So they don't want to go and keep the power amplifier on top. So very appropriately and judiciously, they are spread out here. This is where the power amplifiers are there. Then we have any wave signal server. That means if you have a GSM signal or a CDMA signal or an IS95A signal or a WCDMA signal or the enhanced 3.5G or LTE, any one of them can be taken into this. So these are the power modules. Naturally, for power, you have a circuit breaker and you have a duplexer, okay, and RF transmit receive with the digitizer and the power distribution. So they are all very modularly enclosed. Naturally, uh, because of the power amplifier and all these requirements, one of the biggest power requirements would be that you will have to air condition this entire source to maintain the temperature. So via a laptop, you are able to control via their software any one of these things and monitor the status of this anyway base station. Next slide, please. And uh, this is the one which comes in with uh, Manu's GSM GPRS network. Okay, so you could see uh, how nicely they have segregated here. Okay, uh, we have the radio access network, the antenna side, diversity receiver antenna, the BTS station, and then from the central office, uh, the air interface over IP through which it reaches here. One way anyway, GSM, GPRS, base station, subsystem here. Okay, and then uh, from the central office, it goes typically the pots rack here. Okay, uh, the commercially available on the shelf uh, components they are using. Central office, we have the packet control and the base station requirement, 
and then the core network from the internet we have the tcp ip the gprs support and the mobile switching center here and which is basically coming from dstn and the interface which normally takes care of this is the ss7 so we have here the gigabit interface and the air interface both coming in depending on the requirement next slide so we have the one in building solution ibs stands for in building solution will be a low power low cost rf processing platform with the combination of wanu and third party software to implement one carrier of voice and data processing depending on operator preference two radio access network architecture is available you could either have centralized or distributed so the in building solution processing platform is based on a combination of a texas instrument dsp and an arm general purpose processor and the gsm h physical layer runs on the dsp while the upper layers of the bts the distributed pcu uh, and the distributed ids all run on the arm so they have segregated these two because they were two very popular processors at that point in time next okay so these are the ips components and the poe for powering the ips pentos how they are and how they are aggregated so that gives you the one who ips network architecture and distribution of option option uh, with which one is able to push this across the appropriate path next slide next slide please yeah so on the centralized one the ibs platform will function as a single transmit base station a the abc interface that is the air interface to centralized one bsc the bsc then connects via uh, a over sig tran to interface to the operator support network on the distributed one the ibs platform includes major bsc functions in addition to dts connects via a modified a interface to a new aggregate element creates a single a over sig tran interface to the operator support these are various centralized and distributed functionalities which can be built next slide so a fully featured lab environment with equipment and tools etc and software effectively no test related infrastructure we need commercially available Uh, simulators were well asking to extend coverage and we have in house project manager who can handle all this next these are the tools which we are talking next yeah a test lab what all it has and the startup and scalability and all those requirements have been brought in here okay and how they are all being combined together next now we will look at the simulator requirement so these are all from different uh, platforms okay uh, these are widely used in uh, industry prism engineering is very famous and a uh, good customer for all these and incidentally please remember students all these companies are very potential employers of you once you have gained expertise in these technologies right they are looking for good engineers from the core engineering background of electronics and communication who have basic knowledge in these areas from a functional work, working point of view please remember You, once they give training to you you can easily adapt yourself to either the siemens or ericsson or whatever but the general basic fundamental concepts of engineering as far as sdr and those variations which we are talking that has to be completely understood for you to work on this course next yeah uh okay these are basically device system under test how these all this So you could see all the standards it is able to handle. 
whether you are dealing with LTE, femtocell, IMS, I was talking, I was talking to you, the IP-based multimedia system, WiMAX, UFTS, DGPP requirement, VOIP, GPRS, SS7, GSM, CDMA. So the entire family is being taken care of. Okay. So for any requirement, you can do. That's where we say uh, one or any way type of PTS and that type of a simulation platform. Next. Testing features, these are all type of things. Once you become a testing engineer, you are required to have expertise in all these type of things. Next. So these are the tools which are provided to you. Okay. So you're, you would be basically trained on that. So with that platform, you go to media. But look at it, as I was telling you, somebody was asking me, asking me, what is the language? Please remember, if you're good at one programming language like C, and please remember, when you obtain C, C programming language, what is the compiler on which the C programming language works? Please remember, you have to work that on, not on Turbo C, but on ANSI C. Okay, the C compiler. Okay, has to work on ANSI C type of compiler, not on Turbo C. Please uh, come away from Turbo C, that is not worked at all in industries. The moment you utter Turbo C, industry throws you out. Okay, they don't like you. Test applications are this. Next. Yeah. Next. So, uh, for somebody in Bangalore, uh, sorry, Bhopal, you can uh, hire this and do all the testing here. So, uh, completely what it does is it emulates your GSM UMTS core network for packet and cycle. That means it can operate concurrently with both an MSC and an SGSM requirement, supports connections to multiple BSS and can be used with real mobiles in conjunction with, conjunction with the simulator on the air interface. Additionally, the software modules are available to extend emulation over network elements like this. Okay, and specific interface which manage especially the circuit switch connections here. The PST and type of thing. Next slide. Yeah, so these are all the interfaces. Next. Yeah, this is again for the testing manager and all that. Okay, for their interface to facilitate. And these people give that all the training which is required. Next. Okay, it tells you more details about it and the implementation. Next. Yeah. So the big features which you again see here is multi interface call trace uh, because when you're doing diagnostics on this and when you're trying to identify problems, okay, then uh, on the UMTS and GPRS requirements and application layer analysis. So you're looking at this type of diagnostics at various layers and then trying to do troubleshooting and usage pattern analysis of key JIRA and services such as voice, swap, SMS, OP3, all this type of SMTP and HTTP requirements. Next. Then we are looking at uh, on the K15 protocol tester, all this is coming up, support interface, system verification. Next. Yeah, I think that's the last slide, sir. Hello? Yes, sir, yes, yes. Yeah, we'll go to the third presentation now. So that is the... Uh... Yeah, 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 you can, you can, sir, you can. Third presentation. Then the last one will go to cognitive. I'll just be back.
Oh, you've gone to cognitive radio. Okay, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Uh, students, I want your attention to a new development, uh, which is uh, cognitive radio basically exploits the uh, application of software defined radio. And uh, we have a very nice definition coming out in the next slide. Please have a look at it. Yeah. So that is the basic uh, agenda in which uh, this talk is laid out. Yeah. Uh, so we have a requirement now that many services are now uh, compelled to go towards mobile broadband and they also have a machine to machine type of operation, large capacity requirements, user intervention. And uh, what is the biggest challenge for all of them? The biggest challenge for all of them is when they have to implement these type of services which have been uh, featured above these four services like mobile broadband, machine to machine operations, large capacity user intervention. They all, they have to accomplish all this with limited spectrum. So spectrum has become a very scarce resource. As, as all of you know, the spectrum is costing is so very high and uh, uh, this particular utilization of the spectrum, such a wonderful resource. So we have to very, very carefully utilize it. So that is one particular area where cognitive radio exploits uh, the scarce resources in a very elegant and elegant manner. And that is what I'm trying to highlight to you now in the course of this presentation. Next slide, please. So we would emphasize on the spectrum importance so we'll see how cognitive radio will help us in catching this future. Let's start this journey now. Next. So first we define, uh, we've already seen this, but then uh, on the way before we touch uh, cognitive radio, which we will denote as CR in future. SDR, as you know, is a software defined radio where the single radio might be configured that is the beauty about it, thanks to software, a single radio can be configured to work on different bands, different frequencies, or in different technologies. And this configuration might be changed as per the need. Okay, so this is extremely useful where in a military type of environment. Okay, so you find uh, the colonel who is in charge of that regiment, and uh, he sees he has sent out his uh, field officers to go and survey, and they come back with uh, these, these uh, inputs. So at that is the time, he calls this uh, very special officer who is an expert in this, uh, especially areas like software-defined radio. He comes out with the requirement as to how to configure a military radio for usage in these advanced applications. So there's a great opportunity for people to work on defense related projects. So what are the aspects in SDR uh, software which uh, it is able to change? One is able to look at the security aspect, the modulation aspect, the processing aspect, the frequency and the waveform. So various aspects are being looked at here. Next slide. And uh, specifically, the big advantages which you are able to see is simple network architecture and uh, it is easily configurable, easy configuration, lower complexity 
and easily upgradable. Of course, the disadvantage is uh, still there is no automation and change need user intervention. And uh, the big problem we find is uh, they would necessitate a multi-band antenna. See, because already the BTS antennas are set up and quite a majority of them are narrow band antennas. So one of the big uh, trade-offs is they try to work on narrow bands instead of this multi-band antenna, which they have to look in future directions. So that is on the service requirement, a big limitation. So one has to be very careful in how they position the antennas for the particular application. Next. Okay. So the SDR application, all new cabinets provided by mobile vendors use this concept here. And that is how they are able to look at this particular thing here. Various aspects are put together and depending on the type of requirement and the planes. Next. Yeah. So with that background, Look at this wonderful diagram. You will never forget this. Okay. So the cognitive radio concept, what does it say? Okay. Uh, we can say the cognitive radio is the radio that is aware of its surroundings and adapts intelligently to the new uh, waveform. That means cognitive radio is sensitive to the environment under which it is existing. So if you are existing in the Rajiv Gandhi University at Bhopal, in that environment, the cognitive radio has to function. So what it will do is it will immediately see what are all the frequencies which are operating in that environment. And it will look at a frequency uh, slot or block or space as we call it. And uh, we have a very popular term called, I want all of you to look at this, go to Google and type this uh, term called TV white space. Please look up TV white space because that is uh, one bandwidth uh, which they have specifically uh, provided for cognitive radios to exploit in a big way wherever it is possible. Okay. Then we look at the lower portion of the slide where it says, the motivator behind this is existence of underutilized spectrums as well as congested ones. And this is extremely impacting networks performance. Okay. So when you have a spectrum which is highly congested, you definitely don't want to go into. It. So like as you are seeing the traffic flow here, so you would know which of these lanes to take, which is the time at which you can take and how is it that you can take. So the cognitive radio in a very intelligent way will maneuver and see how it can take action in such type of environments. Next slide. So then there should be a process by which this entire thing can be realized. Okay. So CR is the acronym which I'm using for cognitive radio concept. So what it does is it looks at the radio environment as I told you. Uh, the frequencies which are operating in Rajiv Gandhi University at Bhopal. So the fundamental of the cognitive radio processes are, first one, it has to have the ability to sense the environment. That is very important. Okay. Then look at, evaluate the options. There are various options. Okay. After spectrum sensing, it evaluates the options and then subject that to analysis and implement the chosen waveform. Okay, so that is how the cycle goes. It first examines, to sen it senses the environment. Okay, and then from that, uh, through spectrum sensing, or where cognitive radio plays a very big role and subject that to analysis. Okay, because when you choose that frequency, will it clash with something else or will it interfere is it corresponding to second harmonic of some other frequency or whatever it is we want to see, evaluate the various options, and then decide on the particular chosen waveform which can be taken up. Next slide. So this is how CR operates, okay? Uh, coming from the outside world, user-driven, 
okay and you observe and then uh, what we do is you take that decision and then determine the best known waveform act on that allocate resources and initiate the processes so this is how that entire circle goes so this is user driven here this is autonomous and this is how it takes off and how you are able to do the cr operation works and the cr concept gets implemented next slide okay so uh, the key to the cr concept again is of uh, these two things basically cognitive radio key algorithms are first to do with sensing algorithms okay which is basically uh, sensing the type of frequencies which are being operated on the number of stations which are in operation okay and uh, the other is the cross layer control stations okay so these are the two things at which this entire functional working takes place okay so this is how this whole thing goes and you could see the various blocks pertaining to it and you will find some of them working at the physical layer the others are all on the cross layer control sections next section next next slide okay so here we get a chance to compare the cognitive radio with the smart antennas okay and uh, because this is a term which is being utilized in a big way especially in 5g you will find this having a very important connotation okay and this is again a couple of projects also which students can take up so we'll take up point by point we go to go to the first point which is the principal goal in cognitive radio in cr what is the requirement here is to do with open spectrum sharing whereas in the intelligent antenna requirement it is an ambient spatial reuse so the antenna is in the spatial domain okay so that is where they want to reuse that the interference processing uh, point of view on cognitive radio what is it that you desire avoidance by spectrum sensing we don't want to uh, operate on the same spectrum and cause interference whereas on the smart antenna feature cancellation by spatial pre and post coding we use that term. key cost spectrum sensing and multi band rf whereas here you need multiple of cooperative antenna arrays challenging algorithms which we made use of here the spectrum management technology okay and in the smart antennas we use intelligent spatial beam forming and coding techniques so in a general definition then we have smart antenna is the antenna technology which uses spatial beam formation and spatial coding to cancel interference our requires intelligent multiple of cooperative antenna array on the other hand cognitive radio allows user terminals to sense whether a portion of the spectrum is used to share spectrum with neighboring users so the ultimate decision we take is uh, cr a cognitive radio is simpler to implement than this smart thing antenna next slide Here yeah, we are looking at CR advantages, uh, improving spectrum utilization and efficiency, improving link reliability. Okay. And uh, less expensive radios, advanced network topologies, enhancing SDR techniques, and automated radio resource management, and advanced. interoperability so these are some of the biggest advantages which you see uh, coming out from the cognitive radio okay next and uh, major application is extending mobile networks open air events mobile especially in a campus like uh, in a campus like uh, your rajiv gandhi university campus you are having a, a very big uh, 
PR show which is running and there you want to have uh, the ability to do a new type of uh, mobile network operation, you could invoke the CR, cognitive radio, and along with the SDR implement such a resource for this type of function. So open air events, mobile video services, military application we have already discussed, multi-technology phone, emergency radio systems, especially in the wake of uh, a disaster like uh, either cyclone or whatever type of disaster which occurs we can easily make use of this type of resource next yeah so that brings us to the end of this particular thing professor we can go to that uh, third presentation okay okay Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, so we come to, this is the penultimate presentation. And uh, this again, uh, are slides from analog devices. Uh, so it will just talk about uh, some of the newer, areas in which this whole thing is brought in. Next, next slide. So if you look at this, uh, this is how the agenda is for this presentation. And um, what you basically see is the type of uh, skilling which is basically required here. We have on the front side, the art of design skills, the digital hardware uh, skills coming in, system on chip, which I was talking yesterday, system assembly coming in, DSP hardware is coming in, software development coming in. So you could see what are all uh, the blocks which are involved. And in, in case you people take up any one of them, okay, you will find companies are very happy to recruit you in these areas. So these are basically uh, coming out from such systems here. Next slide. Okay, so uh, what is basically sitting inside, like we saw the various chips and all that, we could see these are the blocks which are sitting inside this, in this type of SDR, what is sitting inside. So today you could see how much of uh, uh, control they have exercised and brought all this to that level compared to the simplest system which we are seeing yesterday. And you could see now the industry standards, what they are bringing in. Next. Yeah, on the software stack, uh, what are all required? There's a lot of you are IT engineers. You can also look at many of these things uh, with which uh, this can be uh, put forth. The stack libraries, uh, which are used for many of these operations. And on the power amplifier, what is required here at the ADI, the low noise amplifier, what is required, and how those things are built in here, okay, is what this gives you in a figurative manner, all the functionalities brought inside and brought, in, brought into the framework here. Next. Yeah, so as it is called under the hood, what is existing, you could see a very glorified diagram which looks at all aspects. And uh, these are all things now which are being enabled. And these type of uh, chips are already being brought into the industry. And you can apply it for 
different requirements. Yeah, next. Yeah, so software, programmable logic and hardware, how they are segregated, okay? Different domains and where they are and what are the requirements and how they can be brought in and combined together. Next. The FPG HDL course and uh, what is that basically looking up to? And uh, we have a zoomed version of that brought in and it shows how this whole thing is configured. Next slide. Yeah, from the other point of view, the DAC. Yeah, next. Okay. So here we have the various functionalities which are required. See, suppose you are connecting with the simple audio system, what happens with the Wi-Fi system, what happens with the local area network, what happens, thumb drive, connection to host, different levels at which this whole thing can be enabled, okay? The system has to work across all of them. So that is how these functionalities are broken up and shown to you. Uh, how different platforms can be interfaced depending on the requirement. Okay, so here, uh, uh, industrial input output, uh, the Linux kernel and the output framework. Uh, so what it does is it, it need not only cater to that type of a requirement, but it is able to take in other things also. The ADC DAC, accelerometer, magnetometer, humidity, all these functionalities are also being taken up for different requirements and what they are all about, okay? And uh, you can see the latest reference which is given here and how that whole thing can be introduced. Fine, next. So now what we do is, uh, why we are using IIO for SGR applications? And you could see how this entire mounting takes place here. It provides the hardware abstraction layers and allows sharing of infrastructure, developers to focus on the solution, application reuse. The kernel drivers have low level, low latency access to hardware. And uh, you have all these type of uh, features built in and the IIO provides fast and efficient data transfer from device to application, application to device, device to network storage depending on the requirement. So you could see the various antennas which are mounted there okay and uh, they are all uh, driven by the systems which are right down below on the hut and then brought in through, through suitable RF cables or wave guiding system to the appropriate antennas operating at different bands. Next. Okay. So the main structure typically corresponds to single physical hardware device represented as directories in different functions here. You have the attributes, the channel, the buffer, and how this whole split up occurs here depending on the requirements. Next. Yeah, so this is something which we have seen already, uh, hardware features like about sampling frequency and all that which we discussed in our application also. Next. And depending on their data channel attributes and is requirement, how that whole thing can be positioned. Next. Okay. So we have, uh, depending on the device attribute, channel attribute, the gain control, which can be built into this overall system. Next. Okay. And accessibility through the buffers of various channels and uh, 
different implementation and the files which are required for this. Next. Okay. Uh, this is your AMA buffer. Fine. Different blocks, how they are brought together depending on the application. The incoming queue, the DMA controller, the outgoing queue, the application user space. So what happens is the data is grouped into chunks of data to manage the ownership. And either application or driver owns a block. And samples per block are configurable. Number of blocks are also configurable. Okay. So map is used to take data available in the application. So the DMA is used to copy data from device to memory. So that type of quick controller with which we are very familiar with this DMA controller in a lot of our applications. So that can be exploited. Next. This is all about system library and what it is doing, the abstraction and all the layers corresponding to that. Okay. So all the package requirements. Next. Okay, and the backends which are there. Okay, and uh, multiplexing between multiple readers and support which is required at different levels. Next, yeah, command. Next, you can go up. Uh, this brief on the command. Next, yeah. Now we look at custom applications. Go ahead. Controlling the transceiver, okay, IP network, physical structure. They've taken an example, baseband rate. Next. Receiving data, next. And buffer handling. These are all operation requirements, next. And uh, allocation and all that. Again, what the big message to all of you is that you need electronics and communication engineers who are good at these little bit of basic programming and who are get that training to work on these platforms because you understand the cellular communication requirement much better than any of the other engineers. Okay, if you have a software engineer for computer science, you would know basically about how the cell communication takes place. So that is the big advantage that you have. And if you can integrate these skill sets, it makes you almost indispensable. Next. Yeah, STR file system. Go ahead, no problem. Okay, next. Yeah, so cross compiling external application, how it does. Uh, so depending on, along with each uh, Pluto SDR firmware, we also provide build root generated sysroot here, allows you to later compile dynamically linked application, which can be ex executed on the Pluto SDR. This is a additional facility, which especially using a cross compiler, we can use this, especially when you're developing some good software for newer applications. Next. Yeah, various options which they are giving. Go ahead. Next. So, this is trying to get inside some of the programming areas in which they are trying to show you a snapshot. Okay and uh, how they are able to do yeah they've taken an example running also okay next okay this is a little bit about the gnu radio uh, this is open source radio platform okay many of you can get access to it and do a lot of implementation on this so these are a couple of those transceivers uh, which a couple of uh, Companies may even allocate or donate to the college or the university once you request them. Next. Okay, the evaluation kits, what they are all about. 
and how the firmware, what is the software built in them, and how you can use it for different applications. Next. Software support, what it is all about. And a lot of these companies like Analog Electronics and all these newer companies, they always give these kits free of charge for you as an evaluation for three to five months, some of them, in case you're purchasing some of these things. Next. Okay. So this is there and these are the references. I think. We have almost reached the end of it now. Okay. Next. Yeah. Fine. So that brings us to an end here to this entire program. Okay. And uh, I would now request uh, uh, Sir Professor uh, Sharma. Sir, yes. Ah, can we uh, just take that uh, uh, cognitive video paper, one paper if it is available, uh, but uh, okay. the reprints are not there, just to show them. Okay, okay, okay. Just the title, and uh, the names are not there, but uh, I will be sending the reprints. Uh, she has made arrangements, the student, and uh, shortly by today evening, she said she'll send it. Yeah, so uh, this was uh, one of the uh, important papers which was published. So uh, this is very important for you students to remember and scholars before, see, we were trying to get into cognitive radio. And uh, we were trying to first understand what exactly is cognitive radio and all that. And then we are looking at uh, spectrum sensing, first paper, uh, which is one of the ones which I'll be sharing it with you. Spectrum sharing using cognitive radio. The other is use MIMO in cognitive radio network. So what it uh, basically surveys is all the different techniques. So if you look at it very carefully, uh, it surveys and benefits of MIMO in introducing and one of the emerging technology future wireless network, okay? Uh, so because the frequency spectrum is so scarce, we are able to couple a lot of this newer technique to conserve the spectrum and use it much better. Uh, uh, so we say as cognition becomes ubiquitous and integrated into everything from home appliances to automobiles, the excitement will morph from cognitive radio to sentient spaces. So various schemes proposed and demonstrated on cognitive radio. So you could see how nicely we are able to couple these things and uh, we say Cognitive radio equips wireless users with the capacity to optimally adapt their operating parameters according to the interactions with the surrounding radio environment and utilize the spectrum more efficiently in an opportunistic fashion without interfering with the primary users. Because we have secondary users, primary users. So this talks about basically that and you could see all the references which have been given in this paper here, okay. Uh, I think uh, uh, those papers will be handed over to sir, okay, right? So on that note, uh, I think, sir, uh, uh, we will come to the last portion in which, uh, um, of course, there are very good references for students to utilize from these papers, these two papers will have. And uh, on the mail, uh, you will share uh, uh, what about that uh, SDR tutorial? Shall we mention that? That uh, we are just mentioning that uh, as part of this course, as part yeah. of this webinar, I will just mention that to them. Okay. Yeah, you can. You, if you have anything, we can send that yeah. also. Well, participants, there are a lot of you now. I'm very delighted to inform you as part of this webinar, I had the opportunity uh, to get uh, a very good uh, tutorial on SDR networks, okay, from a very authentic source. So that is the 
uh, ebook which I am sharing with all of you as part of this. Please utilize it and keep that as a very careful resource. Okay, uh, it's about nearly 17 megabytes that the whole file. So I have shared it with uh, Professor Sharma, and maybe as a parting gift to all participants, this will be distributed to all of you. Okay, and I'm sure you will be richer after you go through that and uh, you can very meticulously go through every page of it it's uh, very beautifully conceived and taken and really a state-of-the-art uh, compilation so that's basically software radio for engineers uh, taken by travis f collins robin gibbs and uh, these are basically coming under the mobile communication series Okay. Yeah, so that brings me an end, uh, uh, brings me to the end of this complete series of presentation. At the outset, I take this opportunity to thank Professor Sharma and the wonderful group of students who have been very patient in spite of several times the net giving us a lot of problems. <laughs> and uh, of course, I, I, it gives me an opportunity to share with you some of the research papers and some of the newer areas. And uh, definitely today, our electronics and communication engineers have a lot of core engineering areas which are emerging. And we would request you to stay back in your domain, look at these newer opportunities which are coming in. And uh, shortly, we'll be entering 5G in a very big way and we see multi-various applications coming in. But before that, what has all evolved, right, from 2G to 4G, and what are the newer areas, whether it is uh, in navigating in a museum, or looking at disaster-prone applications, or looking at multi-dimensional scaling, or looking at uh, uh, car parking applications, or looking at SDR applications, for different things. Here then has been an opportunity which gave Professor Viraj to share with all of you and request all faculty and students to take these wonderful applications forward. And please see to it that you can come out with very new projects in these areas, which is the requirement for a country like India. It is not sufficient that we, uh, we read about our theoretical subjects, but we should be able to have that ability to take it into a laboratory and conceive that as a hands-on type of experiments. And that is how we've been able to do a lot of this. Even when you do the simulation, try to utilize all the equipments which are required. And the proof of the pudding is to implement this on a hardware and make it work. So on that note, I once again wish to thank the organizers and of course, TechCube 3, uh, the Vice Chancellor of Rajiv Gandhi University, and the HOD, the principal, and all of you for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share during the last five days some of the research investigations which I have been able to do, starting from my BTEC students, my master's students, and of course, my PhD student. Okay, the last two papers are coming from the PhD students. Similarly, the one you will also have one more paper on unconstrained optimization on multidimensional scaling, which has been done by my PhD student. Okay, I'll be sharing that paper also with all of you. Thank you for all of you for giving me this wonderful presentation opportunity, sir. Thank you, sir. And yeah. uh, I really it's very important if there are questions. If they have questions, yeah, sure. I will definitely like to answer. And in case uh, they think of a new question, they can always send it on email. I would definitely answer those questions if it is within my ability. Right? As uh, teachers, definitely. there is something we are not able to conceive an answer. We tell you, we are not able to tell you right now, but then <laughs> right. if you take right. reference, we would. Because uh, we are not champions of everything, but whatever definitely. we know, uh, we will be able to tell you in a correct fashion. So I request and uh, advise most of the participants that they can have uh, direct uh, theory with the sir. 
age with us and uh, instead of uh, googling at the laptop he can google the search brain I means he is having a vast knowledge and like an open book we can say so they can ask any 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 <laughs> so participants uh, now it is open for all they can have the question session and any doubts or anything they want to clear with sir you can unmute yourself and then ask the question uh, i am just thinking of uh, uh, vanu bose who conceived that wonderful idea in 1998 of software defined radio uh, he was Hello? Uh, of some mr dr meer bose is fun okay hello yeah. question yeah, coming sir. up yeah hello sir i have one question yeah uh, sir uh, in a cognitive radio network yes in a cognitive radio network what kind of jamming attack is more harmful what what type of sir in a cognitive radio network what kind of jamming attack is more harmful he is asking sir jamming jamming attack oh jamming okay 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 uh, see uh, this is this is wonderful <laughs> nice question he has asked good uh, see normally uh, jamming is very prevalent if you are working at one frequency right in a cognitive radio you can work over a band of frequencies so if there is somebody coming with a jamming network at one frequency you can always switch right very easy for you to switch to a new frequency so when somebody and uh, normally this cognitive radio networks are not uh, 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 going to be uh, located in the main region of operations so the frequency at which they operate very few people will also know about it okay and uh, unless somebody scans the entire spectrum very carefully and then finds it but then uh the immediate recourse they do is they switch the frequency because the cog, cog radio will have 1 2 3 4 there will be at least four frequencies uh, which will be allocated to them depending on which of them is available at that point in time so if they feel one of them is getting affected they will switch over to the other one very elegantly okay and then uh, inform the people around uh, so that they can Uh, switch to the other frequency and overcome that problem okay but this jamming uh, problem is something uh, everybody has to live with at some point in time okay otherwise on the normal things but with cograd uh, they have this advantage which normal uh, radio will not have okay thank you so much for all the session sir any other question please Well, sir uh, the man is uh, software defined radio, radio but yeah. it has uh, much more hardware if you see the whole circuitry and other things yeah so both are uh, both, it has both software also and as well as hardware and i think hardware is more important to that and yeah that no, is, uh, thing is uh, what we showed you here uh, for some of the other application because of which but if you take our normal receiver that first uh, set of slides which i showed you when we are first looking at sdr right when we are just transferring from a radio receiver to an sdr that time we make it very simple but uh, today nobody wants to make a radio only for that they want to use it these industry people have other requirements so we are looking at that side but our simple radio which we take a uh, normal super heterogeneous radio and if you look at the rf and front end uh, antenna and rf and the subsequent stages all the others uh, blocks which through a mathematical process we can convert that to software okay and uh, uh, my request is uh, today students uh, can buy uh, if you go to the market today 
there are a lot of people who are selling. Uh, like uh, you can go to BPL. BPL is one of the receivers, which if you open it very carefully, you have a software radio sitting inside. <laughs> so that students, uh, now this is all put in a chip form in, the, in which that software is residing. So right. uh, uh, from outside, when you look at a complicated one, like what analog electronics has, yes. But on a normal radio, which you look at, okay? And who are the people uh, who are exploiting this? Uh, there's one more thing which uh, uh, I want all students to look at. Uh, uh, you know, sometime back, we had uh, a communication called World Space. Uh, the World Space satellites, uh, they were bringing CD quality music uh, into the homes. Okay. Now we have, I want all of them to look at Yasmi. Yasmi, Y A Z M I, Yasmi communication. And there's a new satellite which has been put up uh, by uh, people, especially for the African continent. Uh, this is basically being used uh, for school education. See, in Africa, we have a lot of schools in the midst of a jungle. So it's very difficult to communicate. So the radio receiver, uh, the satellite receiver uh, for communicating with uh, uh, at a very at L band frequency, somewhere around 1.4 or 1.5, uh, is just a, a micro strip patch antenna. And the uh, only problem is you'll have to keep it outside because it has to look at line of sight to the satellite. Okay, you cannot keep it inside, it won't receive. Like GPS, it won't receive the signal. So you, this antenna has to keep. So ask them to go look at world space in Yasmin and you will find all the receivers are software defined radio receivers, SDR, which can ship to different bands. So they have beautifully exploited that, okay? World Space now, World Space brought this receiver into the market. BPL purchased a lot of them initially. So you will find, let the students go to the commercial market and ask for, is there an SDR type of receiver inside that for the incident. So you could see the practicality of it. So anyone else, any participants? Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yes. Sir, can we yes. use cognitive? Uh, sir, can we use cognitive radios with wireless sensors or some media access protocol to decrease the power? Networks? Cognitive radio with with what? No, can I, can I, sir? Can I get that full question from him? I am not able to hear the other portion. No, I also didn't get. Can you repeat? Can you, can you ask him to repeat and? Om Sir Tiwari, can you repeat? Om Sir. Acha, we expect a lot of uh, uh, software defined radio and cognitive radio projects to come up this year, sir, in your uh, okay. big final year, and also the IT students, also right. some of the PSC students or even some triple E students were interested because these are newer areas where students can bring in new ideas and implement right. this. And up to ek both acha opportunity mil gaya, sir. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. And they are armed with all necessary uh, uh, documentation also we've given. And yes. from industry perspective is also what we've given. That, that is something very difficult to obtain for them. So it is a new idea, new knowledge for them and uh, opportunities also. Yes, so it sir. Has everything. It has everything. Sab kuch de diya, sir. Ball is in their court. <laughs> any other participants? Achha, are there any Bengali students uh, available in your uh, participation list? Uh, nah, then, I, I, I know my Bengali. I, I, I mean, I was thinking of talking to them in Bengali. Okay, okay. So, first question is How can we use cognitive radio with wireless sensors for media transfer protocol? For media transfer protocol. Oh, media transfer protocol. Okay. Right. Okay. That's a very interesting question. Uh, I, I think um, it all depends. Uh, 
uh, how big is that sensor network which they are. I think uh, we, we can use that application. We can use it, but I have not tried it myself. But I believe it can be utilized. It can be utilized. Uh, but I will have to work on that problem more to give him a much better answer for that. But my first uh, surmise on that is we can work on that. But I've really not worked on those problems. Any other participants? Okay, then um, it makes me ask uh, in wireless uh, some three questions for them immediately. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you are always welcome. What is the killer application for 2G communications? What is the killer application for 3G communication? What is the killer application for 4G? What is the killer application for 5G? Now, today when they go for campus interview, people want to ask them that. As I said, for 2G, the biggest application is texting. SMS, SMS and texting. For 3G is basically, can any of the students tell us the answer? But I am, participants, but I am answer, sir. Participants, yes. It is something you are very happy to do on your cell phone now. You have internet on your cell phone. 3G enabled that, internet on your cell phone, right? Okay, that was great. Third one, when we come to, uh, of course, 3.5G is all uh, same thing, uh, but uh, all that multimedia, everything, but at a higher data rate. But moment you come to 4G, it is video streaming. You are able to get very high video streaming because the data rates are hundreds of megabits and all that. Okay, so that is what we do. But then we still don't throw off our 2G, 2.5G uh, phones because they are able to use help the fisherman or the vegetable lady, the vegetable vendor lady who's selling vegetables. She gets information from the market on her SMS. What is the rate at which she has to sell vegetables? Can you imagine, sir, today how anticipated like, like, the vegetable vendor is? How like, good of Indian people have exploited this? So moment they go to 3G is internet. And with that, you know, our students play with that so well. And then we go to 4G. But when we come to 5G, what do you think is the killer application? Can I get the answer from them? From the students? 5G ka application, what is it? Killer application. I'm saying that it's a killer application. Yes, it should be a killer application, yes. Yeah. This is something I will be very happy. 5G has got so much of bandwidth, so much of data rate, so much of different frequency. One of the biggest attributes for 5G is connectivity. And we embrace connectivity for, with Internet of Things. We have millions of things which have to be connected over a particular one square kilometers or uh, 500 kilometers. This region, thanks to 5G, which is working in the millimeter wave, it will provide us. Today, I have a device which wants to talk to another device. If I have 5G communications, it gets enabled. So for us, connectivity, and of course, we have the other attributes like today for connecting uh, 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 driverless cars. One of the biggest attributes which we are able to enable or uh, for a doctor to do a remote operation is that uh, it has uh, latency, very low latency. The, the delay is of the order of one millisecond. Just one millisecond is the delay, maximum delay which you have in this driverless cars with 5G communications, which is enabling this with fast data rates. And we get that extremely good broadband, which everybody is looking for. And it's a technology which all of us are looking for. And it's a great opportunity throwing, being thrown open to all of our scholars, students, faculty, and everybody put together. So we are waiting when 5G comes in and we could do wonderful, wonderful things. So on that note, then I will end my talk here. Once again, thank you very much, Professor Sharma, for patiently bearing with us yes. every day in the morning <laughs> sometime, okay, to get all these presentations. 
and uh, so, I would request if you could send me a small uh, letter uh, addressed yeah. to the Vice Chancellor saying that right. these are the lectures I had given, so that yes, yeah. sometime later when technical people ask us, did you go okay. kid? In my college yes. days, somebody asked, Professor, are you still doing something for somebody? So I could <laughs> tell them. So I, I, will, I will say, sir, definitely I will say. Sir. And okay. uh, if no and questions, then... Uh, as to what the students felt about these lectures. This is just a beginning for me. We hope to do a lot more things. Yes. In definitely, definitely, sir. One definitely. Idea yeah. which I would be very keen yeah. to work with you all is uh, when I came to Bhopal, is on e-governance. Right. right. I would like to give some important lectures on e-governance, which we want our IT and CSC and all. Unfortunately, e-governance is not known to our students at all, sir. Very sad. Right. right. <laughs> can, can I ask them oh. this question, sir? E-governance? Have they seen how e-governance is written? Letter E is small, G is capital. <laughs> right. Why? Why? Right. Can, can anybody answer that, sir? G capital hai. Kyo, kyo aisa banaya? Our students should think. Haan ji. Letter E is small. G is capital. Anywhere Bata you go. Participants, answer them, sir. Aap sochi hai na. Why? See, letter E is our domain, which is economics. Letter G is governance, which is government. It is government which is important. It is not electronics or technology which is important. Technology is used to enable the governance. Okay? So that is why we always write G capital. Clear? Got that doubt? Clear? Yeah. Right? Sometimes letter E is kept small because E is to do with uh, the technology. Generation is technology. First, second, third, and fourth. So always, whenever they use letter E, they keep it small. So we have E being used for different, different applications. It is that application which becomes uh, very, very... Alelo. Yes, sir. Okay, Professor Sharma, on that note... Just I have some... Thank you, Note, and uh, if no questions, then really, yeah. uh, for me also, it is a great session that I have learned many new things from Thank sir. You. Though the government uh, declared you as a retired uh, person, but uh, you are not retired from the point of view of knowledge and the, what you have in your brain. Thank you. Are really, Thank you still, you are talking about the PPA and the data rate and uh, uh, dialings and uh, ADC and DAC. Those are our new generations. Uh, I think uh, it is uh, really difficult them to go through all the whatever we have taught in the uh, last five days. Luckily, so they are well I, documented. They are well documented for you. So I am so happy that I could share all those documents. And today evening, I should be sending those three new papers also, yeah. which kindly share with our students. And uh, mm -hmm. especially on cognitive radio, and uh, that will give them newer ideas and on the MDS. And uh, after participation <coughs> documentation, then. so any of the students can use it uh, subsequently and take it forward. So I am really thankful to Professor Prathvi Rahaj. Really, you are great, sir. Means uh, you have delivered in such a way from the accuracy of GPS to we can say the wireless and then uh, SDR and contest of a system, and we have covered. Oh, means I think uh, most of the things in the new, so new I think, uh, era. students would have found it interesting and uh, we have looked at different research areas to make the webinar as useful to them as possible and if they have any future questions any other areas they can always come back to us I will be so I, have, I, I have shared your uh, mail address with the participants sure so, sir. yeah you have said already shared and uh, book, whatever you've given, that also I'm sending with yeah, the uh, mail. Yeah, yeah, my collection of books are also there, which students yeah. can see. Somebody is asking yeah. that. So this is the <laughs> only gift. This is the gift from God for us, for teachers like us. <laughs> Even though it occupies a lot of space at home, right. per right. attack right. person, we still feel happy to look at any of those books, right? <laughs> so... So now, nowadays, this new generation is having the Google, nothing else. 
and the words and the words of that or that that is the thing <laughs> but we are still that conservative people who came like that you know? so it's unless we see a book and we know something in that which we like to share with the students so sir i am really thankful and uh, all the participants who have joined for last 5 days and i think definitely now you are a part of rgpd so thank you thank you so much and uh, at the earliest possible opportunity sir i look forward to visit your campus please convey definitely. my uh, thanks definitely. to uh, honorable vice chancellor who was kind enough to enable this whole program and your principal director and all your faculty and staff from the various departments yeah. and students uh, so that they culminated to they came together to enable this entire forum to exist my vice chancellor is very much uh, what you call techno savvy so he is to have new new things in for the university so definitely we will uh, try to arrange some visit or even my yes, myself in, if the vice chancellor is possible I, i would be very happy because i am always happy to come to bhopal the city of lakes right, right. <laughs> it is a great major plus sir we had the opportunity uh, such a wonderful city and i we really like it so much and uh, it will give us another opportunity to visit <laughs> definitely sir and it is a really great opportunity for all the participants to carry forward whatever yeah. you have delivered in last 5 days yes, and um, i myself also involved in the software defined radio and let's okay. see how what, what we can do for the Yeah. Future and for the university. We'll so thank it. you very. Much. Today I'll also see. our vice chancellor wanted to join, but again he got some urgency call and he requested that later on we will. Can't blame him. He is too busy, man. Too busy. <laughs> in fact, but so see, he's thinking so young in mind. He's thinking so well to participate yeah. in such things. That is great, and yeah. for enabling such a wonderful program. Right? He has enabled such a good program. so that we right. could share our uh, little know how which we know with all of you <laughs> so so far i am really thankful again and uh, definitely we will arrange a series of webinar and uh, personal visit so that will give you much more flavor and direct interaction with you yeah. and i am very much interested to bring my wife because she has not seen bhopal so oh, i yeah. am really happy to bring her and uh, take hospitality in your guest house <laughs> or where the government house last time they arranged the government house it was very good guest okay. house so okay. where is it no problem thank you please so i pray with god to make you and uh, keep you healthy and so that we can have uh, a session we are we are keeping good health especially during this uh, uh, particular pandemic time and uh, right. i'm so happy that we could have so many participants in spite of this who are able to Definitely. get So thank you, sir. I am really thankful to all the participants I'm and thank. I am leaving the uh, yes, webinar. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you very much. so anything from me you want to say or you can send mails regarding the feedback and how much you have learned and uh, it is not that it is a five days webinar but uh, you have to carry forward this so learn and then uh, choose your field and try to develop something new in the area of uh, contest aware system and uh, software defined radio So I'm really thankful to you all that uh, you really jo joined every day in time and attended uh, very attentive mood we can say. So, anyone ask? Hello, anyone want to add anything? Sir, you are working on yes. software uh, defined this radio. Are you hello? working on Hello sir no, are you working on field, software defined radio No my field oh. is uh, hardware development so FPGA and uh, CPLD based projects 
so it is again the development only so software dependent radio also we will take as a new work for us and we can work together so so yeah i am working with the development sir i then i want to know the uh blsi and embedded technology in fb fpga field uh -huh. what what do you want to know sir how be implement bl how be enhance blsi in blsi with fpga no see uh, blsi is uh, again blsi is a technology and fpga is the we can say the end uh, user and product okay so Good. It, it is going parallelly so only thing earlier days what we were having is the discrete components okay means uh, full adder is separate then your flip flop is separate your uh, counter is separate and then we have to put all together and then finally we are making some 10 bit counter or we can say the uh, bit checker or uh, encoders and like this but with the help of fpg and vlsi in a single chip you can have what you want and uh, we can design the asic chips so according to your application we can have the chip as per our requirement it is not it that the supplier has to give but uh, we can have our own chip so that way it is useful vlsi and uh, fpga okay sir so it is a really uh, new it is not new but uh, it is a great uh, advancements are going on so one can have the exposure to vlsi and fpga and uh, choose that field kyunki apne india mein abhi foundries kam hai apne chip nahi banti hain lekin aap apna design simulate kar sakte hain bana sakte hain aur usko bahar kahin par agar koi foundry accept karti hai to wahan usko bhej sakte hain okay sir anyone else then we get uh, all these ppt ppt sir yeah yeah i, I will i will share the ppts and uh, certificate it will take little more time because uh, as you know that uh, we are having the lockdown one lockdown two and we don't know so yes sir. once it, once it will be printed or be ready i will be sharing with you all okay so don't worry for that it yes, will be either with me or in the computer somewhere but you will get definitely okay okay sir, okay, sir. thank you thank you so don't worry for that and don't uh, keep on asking me because uh, i may be having some other work so once it is ready whatever mail id you have given you on your uh, uh, certificate uh, form so i will mail on that mail id so anything else from my side yeah participants can leave they want to discuss anything they can i will be available otherwise i can also leave someone is asking my contact details so i am available at uit rgpb and whenever you feel to meet me or to have some discussion either you can contact on mail or you can if you are from bhopal you can come directly to uit so my mail id is uh, sk sharma so i said my mail id so together we can do something new for the rgpv or for society and for the nation so because now because of your internet now world has become very small 
So it is not that you are at Indore or I am at Bhopal or you are at Jabalpur. So all are now together, means we can say. So thank you everyone. So I am closing this session. And if I exist on this planet, then sometime again we will meet in some other webinar or some other workshop. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.